Hello, welcome to English for Everyone, where we practice real-life American English. Today we're going to practice with different pronunciations. First we see this word, cruel. We see the U-E-L at the end. We do not pronounce it cruel. We're not pronouncing the E. We're pronouncing the U-E together as the sound U. Cru. Leaking it to a dark L. Cruel. It sounds like pool and cool. You have the long U sound followed by the dark L. Pool. Cool. And this word is cruel. It's the opposite of kind. It means to be very mean to somebody. You are cruel to somebody. Don't be cruel to other people. Be kind. So the dark L is the same position as a light L. You put the tongue up, touching the roof of your mouth, not your teeth, behind your teeth. And what's different is your tongue is not straight. It goes a little high in the back. Oh, oh. And the bottom of the tongue expands. It gets bigger to make the dark L. So, cruel, oh, 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 that's the dark L. Cruel, and it's not cruel. There's kind of an extra sound, and where it comes from is, when you say ooh, your mouth is in a more closed position. Cru. And when you make the dark L, the mouth opens a little bit. Oh, oh. So when you link those sounds, when the mouth opens a little bit, you get a little bit of an extra sound. But it's not uh, it's not an extra vowel. It's one vowel. Cruel. Oh. Your mouth opens and you make an extra little sound. Cruel. Like pool and cool. Example, this boy is not kind to animals. He's cruel to animals. Use the preposition to. Pronounced t. Cruel to. Cruel to animals. This boy is cruel to animals. Let's practice. Is this boy cruel to animals? That's right. He's cruel to animals. He's not a nice boy. Now let's look at this word with a similar spelling pattern and a similar pronunciation. Gruel. Again, we see the U-E-L making the long oo sound, followed by a dark L. Just like in the words, pool and cool. Gruel. Gruel is a kind of food. It can be made like oatmeal, but it's not so thick. It's usually thinner. And in America, it's known for being bad. It's not a good food. So if you want to complain about some food that you don't like, it's very soupy and thin, you can say, this stuff tastes like gruel. I'm not eating this. Example, I don't want gruel for breakfast. I want something better. I want a better breakfast. What about you? Do you want gruel for breakfast or do you want something better? Very good. Now let's compare these two words. Gruel is a kind of food. It ends with a dark L because the L is after a vowel. It's at the end of the word after a vowel. That's when you use a dark L. Gruel. But if I put ing after it, now I have an L between vowels. If you have an L or a double L between vowels, that's a light L. So it's a little different. Grueling. Ling. Grueling. What's different? Well, the light L, you don't expand at the bottom of the tongue. You don't raise the back of the tongue. You just make it straight. Uh, uh. The tip of the tongue is in the same position. It's touching the roof of your mouth right behind your teeth, but not touching your teeth. Uh, uh. Grueling. Grueling. Use the long oo, and when it connects, when it links to the light L, it sounds a little different. Listen. Gruel and grueling. It's not so dark. Grueling. Now, grueling is completely different from gruel. Grueling is an adjective. It's to describe something that's very, very difficult. It's not just hard. It's so difficult that it's like torture. It's similar to something that's like punishing you. Very difficult. Example, running a marathon is grueling. It's very, very difficult. It's like torture. It's punishing. What do you think? Is running a marathon grueling? That's right. Running a marathon is grueling. Also notice with the U-E-L, we don't say U-L. It's not grueling. It's grueling. Use the long U plus the light L. Grueling. It's grueling. It's horrible. 
Now let's take a closer look at the difference between the light L and the dark L. We see with these two words, listen and allow, we use the light L. How do you know? Well, when you have an L at the start of a word, before a vowel, that's a light L. L, L, listen, listen. The tongue is touching the roof of your mouth, right behind the teeth. Listen. And the tongue is flat and straight. It's not raised in the back. It's not expanded at the bottom. It's just straight. Listen. And with the word allow, you see the L, here the double L, is between vowels. When you have an L or a double L between vowels, that's a light L also. Allow, allow. Now let's look at these two words, call and milk. These are both dark L's because you have the L at the end of the word after a vowel. After a vowel, we use a dark L. Call. After a vowel at the end of the word, we use the dark L. Call. Or if the L is after a vowel but before a consonant. It's not between vowels. It's between a vowel and a consonant. The L is after a vowel but before a consonant. This is also a dark L. Mil. Milk. It's not milk. It's milk. Oh, oh. The tongue gets fatter at the bottom. It expands and it goes up a little bit in the back. L, L, milk. The L in milk is also a dark L. Now let's look at other words ending in U-E-L and see the different pronunciations we have. The first word is dual. Dual. We see U-E-L making the same sound as before, like pool and cool. Dual. And it ends with a dark L. Because the L is after a vowel at the end of a word. Dual. This is a dual. They're fighting a duel. And you can also use duel as a verb and add ing. They are dueling. Now what changed? Now the L in dueling is between vowels. So we have to change that L to a light L. So it's not dueling, it's dueling, dueling. They're dueling. Somebody's going to die. It's not a good idea. They shouldn't duel. So see the difference? Duel with a dark L and dueling with a light L because the L is between vowels in the word dueling. And it's not dueling. Don't pronounce that E. It's one sound, oo, plus a dark L. Duel and dueling. Let's practice. What are they doing? Are they dueling? That's right, they're dueling. Not a good idea. They should solve their conflict some other way. Now let's look at this word. Fuel. We see the same spelling pattern, U-E-L at the end, but this one's a little different. We're going to use the Y sound. F, fuel. Not fool, but fuel. We have the same long U sound after the Y, so it's U, plus the dark L. Fuel. Fuel. Not fuel. Remember, when you link the U plus the dark L, the mouth opens a little bit, but it's not a real syllable. It's like this. Fuel. Fuel. This is fuel. And fuel can be a verb, too. I can say they're fueling the jet. They're putting fuel in the jet. So I can say they're fueling the jet. Now we see the word fueling with the L between vowels. So it's a light L now. It's a little different. Fueling. Not fueling, but fueling. The light L is straighter. Uh, uh, fueling. They're fueling the jet. We can't leave yet because they're still fueling the jet. Let's practice. Can we leave or are they still fueling the jet? That's right. We can't leave yet. They're still fueling the jet. So let's review all the words we've learned that end with U-E-L. The first one was cruel, then gruel, also dual and fuel. We see with the first three, they're pronounced pretty much the same. Cruel, gruel, and dual. They all have the oo sound plus a dark L, ool, like pool and cool. But remember, with fuel, we have the same spelling pattern, but the pronunciation is a little different. We put that y sound in there. Fia, fia, fuel. So all four words, cruel, gruel, dual, and fuel. Now let's look at a different spelling pattern with the same pronunciation. This word, 
jewel. It's pronounced the same as cool and pool. You have the long oo sound plus the dark L. There's no extra vowel. It's not jewel, it's jewel. Like pool and cool. Make the long oo sound plus the dark L. Ooh. The mouth opens a little bit. It makes a little extra sound. Jewel. Jewel. This is a jewel. A ruby, for example. A ruby is a jewel. And if I make something with this jewel, I call it jewelry. So the first sound, jewel, plus re. Together, jewel, re. And what about the L? Does it change? No, it doesn't change. It's still a dark L. Because you have the L before a consonant. The L is not between vowels. When the L is between vowels, that's a light L. But this is still a dark L. Just like jewel, the L stays the same in jewelry. Let's practice. What is a ruby? That's right. A ruby is a jewel. And what about this? Is this expensive jewelry? That's right. This is expensive jewelry. That was difficult. Let's do something a little easier. Let's look at these words. These words are all the same. Cool, pool, tool, and fool. You see the same spelling, double O plus L, and the same pronunciation. It's the long oo sound plus the dark L. Cool, pool, tool, and fool. Now let's change one word. Let's change cool to cooling. Now the L in cooling, is it a dark L or a light L? That's right, it's a light L because it's between vowels. So let's hear the difference. Cool has a dark L at the end, but cooling has a light L. Do you hear the difference? Cool, cooling, cooling. Not cooling, but cooling. The tongue is straighter. The tongue is straighter and thinner. It's not expanded at the bottom. It's not coming up at the bottom. It's just straight. Example, this is a cooling system, and it's a very complex cooling system. I don't understand how it works. It's really complex. It's a complex cooling system. Let's practice. Is this a complex cooling system? That's right. This is a complex cooling system. Now we see another spelling pattern. U-L-E. The first word is rule. But the second word is not mule, it's mule. So it's a little different. Let's talk about mule. What is a mule? A mule is an animal. It's a mix of a horse and a donkey. The horse and the donkey get married and they have a baby. And that baby is a mule. It looks a little like a horse and a little like a donkey. That's a mule. And it doesn't matter if it's a boy mule or a girl mule. We call them both mules. And here's a fun fact. If you get two mules together, they cannot have babies. They cannot have children. It's impossible. Only a horse and a donkey can make a mule. And they're hard workers, but they're kind of stupid. They're kind of slow. But mules work hard. They're more popular in the southern states in the United States. The southern part of the United States has a lot of mules. Let's practice. Do mules work hard? That's right. Mules work hard. So remember, mule has the y, y sound. M -y mule. Finish with a dark L because the L is at the end of the word after a vowel. Mule. Now let's talk about rule. With rule, we don't say rule. There's no y. It's just ru, dark L, o, rule. Example, you need to follow the rules. But what if I change the word rule to ruler? Now the L is different. Is it a dark L or a light L? That's right, it's a light L because it's between vowels. So it's not ruler, it's ruler. Ruler. Use a light L. It's straighter. L -l ruler. Ruler. And what is a ruler? A ruler is a measuring device like this. In America, it's 12 inches or 1 foot. You also have centimeters on an American ruler, but the length is always one foot. 
If you go to other countries, you might find a ruler that's 20 centimeters. It's a little shorter, but it's still a ruler. I used to use rulers in school. When I was in school, I used a ruler. What about you? Did you use a ruler when you were in school? Very good. So we see the L's are different there. When you said school, you used a dark L. Because the L is at the end of the word, after a vowel. School. And when you said ruler, you used a light L. Because the L is between vowels. Very good. Also remember, a ruler is always a stick. If it's longer, a longer stick. For example, this is a yardstick. It's three feet in the United States. 36 inches. And if it's not a stick, then it's called a tape measure or a measuring tape, not a ruler. But there's another kind of ruler. Also, a king can be a ruler, an emperor, a czar. They can all be rulers. For example, Napoleon. Napoleon was the ruler of France a long time ago. Let's practice. Was Napoleon the ruler of France? That's right. Napoleon was the ruler of France a long time ago. Now let's look at words ending in U-L-E that have multiple syllables. They're not one-syllable words like rule and mule. They have multiple syllables. First, let's talk about this word because it has two different pronunciations. Some people stress the first syllable only, and some people stress both syllables. If you stress both syllables, you say schedule, schedule, and you say schedule, 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 schedule. Let's hear some examples. To stay on schedule for the test, you're going to have to be finished in eight days, okay? Okay. The Death Star will be completed on schedule. Everyone in favor of changing the schedule, please raise your hand. But, um, what if your schedule changes? And some people pronounce it differently. They say, schedule, schedule. And they put the stress only on the first syllable. Schedule. Let's hear some examples. You know, I'm sure having a schedule where it's not hectic. So it's the shooting schedule for the day that Celia died. What about next week? What's your schedule like? Okay, then let's talk about coming up with a schedule for visitation rights. Call my secretary and have her schedule a lunch. Finish the work schedule for next week. Did it I type up the schedule for the trucking fleet. So in both pronunciations, we end with a dark L because the L is after a vowel at the end of the word. Schedule. Schedule. One is longer. Schedule. And it has an extra sound. It's not like pool and cool. It's schedule. Oh, oh, oh. There's an extra vowel there. Or you can make it short and say schedule. Schedule. Also, we notice the D-U making the J sound, like in juice and jump. j j, -j Schedule. Or schedule. Example, I have a flexible work schedule. What about you? Do you have a flexible work schedule? Very good. Now let's change the word with I-N-G. Scheduling. Scheduling. He has some scheduling conflicts. Pronunciation. When I say schedule, I have a dark L. But when I say scheduling, is it dark or light? That's right, it's light because the L is between vowels. Scheduling. So you can say scheduling with the stress on the first syllable. Scheduling. Or you can say scheduling and make it longer on the second syllable. Scheduling. But in both words, the L is a light L because it's between vowels. Let's practice. Does he have any scheduling conflicts? That's right. He has some scheduling conflicts. He needs to fix his schedule. And we have this word, module. With module, the stress is on the first syllable. So the second syllable is short. Module. And we see the D makes the J sound, like juice and jump. Module. D-U in the middle of the word usually makes the J sound. So a module can be a lesson in a teaching or training system. Example, she's working on module two. She's still working on module two. And we see with the word, we use the dark L because it's after a vowel at the end of the word. Module. She's still working on module two. Let's practice. Is she still working on module two? 
That's right, she's still working on Module 2. She's not finished yet. And this is also a module. This is a lunar module. They landed on the moon in the lunar module. This thing is called a lunar module. Let's practice. What do you call this? What is it called? That's right, it's called a lunar module. And this word is capsule. Again, the stress is on the first syllable, so the second syllable is short. It's not capsule, it's capsule, with a dark L at the end. Capsule. So we see the medicine is available in tablets and capsules. The tablet is the round one, and the capsule is the one that looks like a cylinder. One tablet or two capsules. The medicine is available in both tablets and capsules. Let's practice. Is the medicine available in tablets and capsules? That's right. The medicine is available in both tablets and capsules. So you have a choice. Now let's look at this word. This word is ridicule. We see the stress on the first syllable and the third syllable. So we pronounce it long. It's not ridicule or ridicule. It's ridicule. Make the long oo sound plus the dark L at the end of the word. Ridicule. Ridicule is a verb. It means to make fun of someone or to make someone look ridiculous. It's not nice to ridicule people. And if I change the verb with ing, ridiculing. Is the L a dark L or a light L? That's right. It's a light L because it's between vowels. It's different. Ridiculing. Ridiculing. You still have the long oo sound. Ridicule. Remember with the e sound. Ridicule. Ridiculing. The boy is ridiculing the girl. It's not nice to ridicule people. Let's practice. Is it nice to ridicule people? That's right. It's not nice to ridicule people. And is the boy ridiculing the girl? That's right. The boy is ridiculing the girl. Now let's look at this word. Ridiculous. The stress moved to the second syllable. Ridiculous. So the last two syllables are short. It's not you. It's ridiculous. You still have the y sound, y, y, ridiculous, ridiculous. So the last two syllables are short, uh, uh, ridiculous, ridiculous. The boy is trying to make the girl look ridiculous. He's ridiculing her, so he's trying to make her look ridiculous. Let's practice. Is he trying to make her look ridiculous? That's right. He's trying to make her look ridiculous. It's not nice. So remember, we have a lot of different spelling patterns to make the sound ool, and sometimes yule. And we also learned how to identify the dark L from the light L, and how to pronounce it correctly. Today we're going to learn some great pronunciation rules so we can avoid mistakes in the future. Let's get started. Today we're learning different pronunciations of the letter T. The first one we see is this one. We see T-I-E or T-I-A, it makes the sound sh, sh, like shoe and shirt, the soft sound, sh, sh. Examples, patient and initial. With patient, we see T-I-E making the sh sound, patient. The first syllable is a long A, like day and pay, pay, and sh. The second syllable is a closed sound, sh, 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 patient. Patient can be an adjective, you need to be patient, or a patient can be a person in a hospital or a doctor's office, a patient. And this word, initial or initials, more than one. We see T-I-A together, so the T is pronounced sh, sh, initial, initial. My initials are K-R-L for Kevin Richard Liddell. These are my initials. Let's practice. Is he a patient in the hospital? That's right. He's a patient in the hospital. Let's practice. My initials are KRL. What are your initials? 
Very good. Let's test what we've learned. You see a new word. You see T-I-A. How do we pronounce it? That's right. Shh, shh. So how do we pronounce this word? That's right. Initiate. In the present, initiate. In the past, initiated. The second T is between vowels, so we pronounce it like a fast D. Edited. Initiated. Initiated. It means started. Example. Who started the fight? Who initiated the fight? The boy. The boy initiated the fight. Let's practice. Who initiated the fight? That's right. The boy initiated the fight. He started it. Let's test what we've learned. We see this word. How do we pronounce it? Well, you see T-I-E in the second syllable. You know the T is pronounced sh sh. So this word is patience. That's right. Patience is a noun. To be patient, patient is the adjective, and patience is a noun. So you need a lot of patience to learn a second language. Let's practice. Do you need a lot of patience to learn a second language? That's right. You need a lot of patience to learn a second language. Now let's learn another pronunciation of T. When I see words like this with T-U plus a vowel, like T-U-E or T-U-A as the second or third syllable, the T is pronounced ch-ch, like chicken and change, ch-ch. So pronunciation, statue, statue. For the first vowel, we use the short a ah, like black cat, sta. Then we use the ch sound, statue, statue. For the second syllable, we use the long oo like boot and moon, oo. Together, statue. This is the Statue of Liberty. And we see that T in liberty is between vowels, so it's pronounced like a fast D. Liberty. Liberty. Not liberty, but liberty. The Statue of Liberty. And the second word, we see T-U-A as a second syllable. So the T is pronounced ch-ch. Actual. Actual means real. And you can say actually. Actually means really. In reality. Actually. Or actual. This is an actual diamond. It's not a fake diamond. It's real. So I can say it's an actual diamond. Let's practice. What statue is this? Is this the Statue of Liberty? That's right. This is the Statue of Liberty. And this diamond, is it real? Is it an actual diamond or is it fake? That's right. It's an actual diamond. Let's practice what we've learned. What's the pronunciation for this word? We see the T as a second syllable with T-U-A. So we pronounce it with the ch sound. It's pronounced situ, situation. One situation or two situations. So the second syllable is the long oo like boot and moon. Situ, situation. We have two vowels together, the oo and the a. We need to link these vowels with the sound w, w, like the w sound, w, w, together. Situation, situation. Example, you need to practice English in all different kinds of situations. Let's practice. Do you need to practice English in all different types of situations? That's right. You need to practice English in all different types of situations. Let's test what we've learned. You see a new word. What's the pronunciation? You see T-U-E as the second syllable. So the T is pronounced ch, like chicken. So what's the pronunciation? That's right. Virtue. What is a virtue? A virtue is a morally good quality. Example, patience. Patience is a virtue. It's a morally good quality to be patient. So I can say patience is a virtue. Virtue is countable, so I have to say a. Uh. Use the article a. Uh, a virtue. Patience is a virtue. What do you think? Do you think patience is a virtue? That's right. Patience is a virtue. Let's look at another situation where T is pronounced ch. These two words, nature and natural. We see the spelling pattern, 
T-U-R-E. In this spelling pattern, T is pronounced with the ch sound, like chicken. So we see the word nature. And the other word, natural, we see T-U-R plus a vowel, an A. Also in this pattern, the T is pronounced with the ch sound. So the word is natural. But first, let's focus on the first syllable in these two words. In the first word, we use the long A, like day and say. Nay, nature. Nature is the thing. The noun is nature. And the adjective, the description, is natural. The first syllable is pronounced with a short A, like black cat. A, a, na, natch, natural. Natural is the adjective. Now we look at these two words. We see a similar spelling pattern. So the pronunciation, that's right, it's ch. The first word, culture. And the second word, cultural. Also remember the first syllable is a short U, like cup and up. Uh, uh, make a relaxed sound. C, culture, and cultural. Let's test what we've learned. Let's look at these two words. What's the pronunciation? What's the pronunciation of T? That's right, it's ch, because we see T-U-R-E, we pronounce the T as ch, and we see T-U-R-I in futuristic. Again, the T is pronounced with the ch sound. So the first word, future, and the second word is futuristic. Future is a noun, and futuristic is the adjective. This is an image of the future, someone's imagination of what the future looks like. And if I describe this image, I can say it's futuristic. It's a futuristic image. It's an image of the future. Let's practice. Is this a futuristic image? That's right, it's a futuristic image. Is it an image of the future? That's right, it's an image of the future. Or someone's imagination of the future. Another situation where T makes a ch sound is TR. When you have TR together in any situation, you can pronounce it ter, but usually we don't. We pronounce it ch, ch plus the R sound, chur. Example, train, truck, tree, and travel. Remember, when you see TR, make the ch sound plus the R. It will help you pronounce the R correctly, so you don't say train or tri. Use the ch plus the R, the voiced R sound. Chur, chur, train, truck, tree, and travel. Now let's talk about the pronunciation of T-I-O-N. Normally when you see T-I-O-N, the T is pronounced with the soft sh sound, like shoe and show, the soft sound sh. So we have shun, shun. This is the most common pronunciation of T-I-O-N, but it's not the only one. So again, the most common is shun. Example, information, communication. So what is the other pronunciation of T-I-O-N? When T-I-O-N is after an S, then it's pronounced differently. It's pronounced with the ch sound. The hard ch sound like chicken and change. With words like this, question. It's not question, it's question. Use the hard ch sound because the T-I-O-N is after an S. Let's see some other words. Let's test what we've learned. We see this word. How do we pronounce it? Is it suggestion or suggestion? That's right, it's suggestion, because the T-I-O-N is after an S. Make the hard ch sound like chicken. Suggestion. Let's look at the complete word. The first syllable is the short uh sound, like cup and up. S, sug. We have two G's, and we're going to pronounce both of them. The first G is a hard G sound, sug. And the second G is the J sound, like juice and jump. Pronounce both. Sug, jest, suggestion. And the T-I-O-N, the T makes the ch sound. So together, suggestion. Suggestion. Put the stress on the second syllable. He made a suggestion. He made a good suggestion. Let's practice. Did he make a good suggestion? That's right. He made a good suggestion. 
let's look at some other situations where T makes a CH sound. When you have a T before a Y in two separate words, and you link the pronunciation of the two words, you will hear the CH sound. For example, look at your room. At your is correct, or you can say at your. Look at your room. If I separate the words, the T is a stop T because it's after a vowel. Look at your room. But if I link the words and I'm talking faster, you can hear, look at your room, etcher, etcher. Look at your room, it's a mess. You need to clean it. Let's practice. What do you say when you see your children's messy room? That's right. Look at your room, it's a mess. You need to clean it. Another example, get your stuff. If I separate, I can say get your stuff. But because I have a T before a Y making the Y sound, I can change the T to a ch, -ch sound like chicken and say get your, get your stuff, let's go. Get your stuff. Or with this example, I bought you a present. You can separate and say I bought you a present. I bought you a present. Or when I have T before the Y, I can make the ch, -ch sound. I bought you. I bought you a present because it's your birthday. I bought you a present. You're welcome. Let's practice. It's my birthday. Did you buy me a present? Thank you so much. Now let's look at the pronunciation of these two words. We see that double T is in the middle, but it's not between vowels. Not technically. When you look at the letters in the word, the T, or the double T, is not between vowels, but phonetically it is. When you see T-L-E or T-T-L-E, phonetically the T is between vowels. And for this reason, the T changes to a fast D in American pronunciation. That's why we do not say little, we say little. And we do not say bottle, we say bottle. So this is a little bottle. Again, this is a little bottle. It's very small. Let's practice. Is this a little bottle? That's right. This is a little bottle. Today we're practicing the American pronunciation of the letter T. Our first example is NT. When you see NT, a lot of times you don't hear the T. Example, center. Of course, you can say center. It's correct. But a lot of Americans will pronounce it center. Or this word, 20. You can say 20 or you can say 20. Most Americans will say 20. Wanted or wanted. It's more common to hear Americans say wanted. You have NT in the middle, the T is silent. Other examples, internet. Internet or internet. International. International or international. Example, the internet is international. It's not just in one country, it's all over the world. So I can say, the internet is international. Let's practice. Is the internet international? Very good, that's right. The internet is international. Remember, when you say the word internet, use the. Pronounce the with a long E. The internet. But this rule depends on stress. If you have a stress after the NT, if you have a stressed syllable after NT, then you have to pronounce the T. Example, intense. I put the stress after the NT, so I have to pronounce a T. I cannot say inense. No, it's intense. Or words like intensive, intoxicated. We have the stress after the NT. We pronounce the T like a pure T. T, -t release the sound. Intoxicated. Integrity. The stress is after the NT in these words. So we pronounce a T as a pure T integrity. Again, pronunciation, intense, intensive, intoxicated, integrity. This man is intoxicated. It means he's drunk. He's intoxicated. Let's practice. Is he intoxicated? That's right. He sure is. He's intoxicated. Now let's talk about situations when the T is silent. The T is silent when it's between consonants. Examples, exactly. Christmas. We see the T is between consonants, so we don't pronounce it. 
You don't say exactly, exactly. Don't pronounce the T. Exactly. You go from the k sound to the l sound. Exactly, exactly. Or the word Christmas. We don't say Christmas. The T is between consonants, so it is silent. Link the sound s with the m. Christm, Christmas, Christmas. And it's not only in single words. If you have two words together and you're linking the words, which we do, the T is also silent. Example, must be, must be. If you separate the words and you pause between words, then you could say must be. But if you link the words, you pronounce it must be, must be. The T is silent because it's between consonants when you link the words, must be. Link the sounds, s with a b, s, b, together, must be, must be. Example, he's old and she's young and pretty. Why is she with him? Well, it's obvious. He must be rich. Pronunciation, must be. He must be rich. Let's practice. Why is this girl with this man? He's very old. He's too old for her. That's right, he must be rich. Another example, just want. We see the T is between consonants, so it's silent. Link the sounds together. Just want, just want. I just want to eat. I'm hungry. I just want to eat. Not just want, but just want, just want. And we see the T in want is an NT. So we don't pronounce the T and we say wanna, wanna. I just want to eat. Want to or want to. You can pronounce it wanta or wanna. Both pronunciations are correct. I just want to eat. I'm hungry. I just want to eat. Let's practice. Are you hungry? Do you just want to eat? That's right. I'm hungry. I just want to eat. Or just saw. We see the T is between consonants, so don't pronounce it. It's silent. Just saw. You link the S with the S. Link them together. Just saw. Just saw. They just saw a movie. They didn't see a movie a long time ago. They just saw a movie. Let's practice. Did they just see a movie? That's right. They just saw a movie. Or this example, just once. But you say there's an O in once. That's a vowel. But phonetically, it's not a vowel. Phonetically, it makes the sound w w like a W, w w once. So phonetically, the T is between consonants. So it's silent. Link the sounds. Just w, just w, just once. There's no T. Just once. Example: They saw the movie just once. They didn't see the movie two times. They saw the movie one time. They just saw the movie once. Just once. They saw the movie. Just once. Let's practice. Did they see the movie two times or just once? That's right. They saw the movie just once. Or when we see the word don't. A lot of times the T in don't is silent. Examples. I don't know. And I don't care. I don't know. If you link the sounds, I don't know. Link the N with the other N. I don't know. Here, the T is between consonants, so we don't pronounce it. I don't know. And I don't care. Again, with don't, the T is between consonants, so you don't hear it. You don't hear it. Example, I don't care. So, I don't know, and I don't care. Let's practice. Do you know, or do you care? That's right. I don't know, and I don't care. And we have some words that have patterns. Letter patterns where the T is silent. Example, listen and fasten. You see S-T-E-N. With this spelling pattern, you can see the T is silent. Listen. We don't say listen. It's listen and fasten. Example, fasten your seatbelt. Fasten is a verb and the T is silent. You need to fasten your seatbelt. Let's practice. Do you need to fasten your seatbelt? Very good.
We also see the silent T when you have the spelling pattern S-T-L-E. Like these words, whistle, castle, and hustle. The T is silent with the spelling pattern S-T-L-E. Example, this is a castle. Not a castle, but a castle. I would love to live in a castle. What about you? Would you like to live in a castle? Very good. And this is whistle. Whistle. I know how to whistle. Remember, with the verb know, use connectors how to. How to. Or pronunciation, how to. How to. Why do we say how to? Because the T is between vowels, phonetically. How to. I know how to whistle. What about you? Do you know how to whistle? Very good. And now let's talk about these two words. Soften and often. With both words, I don't pronounce a T. I say soften. And I say often. But sometimes you'll hear people say often. And it's not wrong. It's okay. People say both. Often and often. I prefer often. Now the word soften, you can never say soften. It's always soften. And it means to make something soft. If you want to make your clothes soft, when you wash them in the washing machine, you can add fabric softener. Soften plus er together, softener. I don't use fabric softener. What about you? Do you use fabric softener? Very good. So remember these two pronunciations of T. When you see NT in the middle between vowels, the T is often silent. But if the stress is after NT, then you have to pronounce the T like a pure T. Intensive. And when you see T between consonants, it's silent. Don't pronounce the T. If you link the sounds, do not pronounce the T. Examples, exactly, and Christmas. Keep watching this video to see more examples and continue practicing with the pronunciations of the letter T. Today we're talking about the pronunciation of T. T has a lot of different pronunciations. First, let's look at this one. When T is at the beginning of a word, and after T you have a vowel, we use the pure T sound. Put your tongue up and release. T. Put your tongue up behind your teeth, not touching your teeth, just behind your teeth. Like this. T. And release. Examples. T. Tie. Table. And teacher. So the word starts with a T, and after T you have a vowel. Make the pure T sound. But what if the T is at the end of the word, and before T you have a vowel, then we do a stop T. That means you put your tongue up in the T position, but you don't release. Example, wait, wait. I don't say wait. I don't release the T. It's a stop T. I stop the air. I stop the air with my tongue in the T position. Wait. For obvious reasons, I couldn't wait for your permission. Yes, sir, Molly and I can't wait to try those restaurants you recommended. That's right. I can't wait to see your face when this rookie takes first place in front of the entire town. You can't ask me to wait for that. It's happening now. Harvey is that hero. You know, you don't always have to wait for me to come to you. Oh, you're not going. You're going home. Or you wait for me to call and tell you what, if anything, we found. Thought. Thought. At the end, the tongue goes up and makes a stop T. Not thought, but thought. 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 I thought you were going to bring your daughter to help you translate. Oh, that's what I thought you said. That's what I thought. That's what I thought you said. Yeah. That's what I thought you said. That's what I thought you were going to say. And there was this moment when I was looking at her, and I... I don't know, I thought I could actually date this one. Hot. 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 And, uh, I mean, it was hot, and I got burnt. <laughs> hey, you know, it's kind of a hot day to uh, be a raccoon. I remember it was the first really hot day of spring. You want a hot dog? Sit. Sit. Not sit, but sit. You sit there with a mass murderer. Alan's going to sit there. Alan! They think that we'll just sit there and take it like good little boys. And when you have a T at the end, a stop T, it makes the vowel shorter. 
Let's compare these two words. Play. There's no stop T. The vowel is longer. Play. There's no stop T. So the vowel is longer here. Play. Compared with plate. Plate. The stop T makes the vowel shorter. They're the same vowel. They're the long A. But the stop T at the end makes the long A a little shorter. Let's listen again. Play. Play soccer. Play and plate. Plate. It's shorter. I'm just going to go get a plate. Go get a plate. Miss Baker told me to bring you a plate. Sweet potato pie. Put that on the plate. Let's play a game then. Let's play a game, just me and you. What? Let's play a game. We need a break. Let's play a game. Other example, day, day, and date, date. So with date, we see the vowel is shorter because you have a stop D at the end. I got bored one day and I put everything on a bagel. But now I'm sure the day won't come when you no longer need Batman. Have a blessed day and hey, may your luck come out just as good as mine. Can we set up a date right now? Are you available next Thursday? got a date with a pretty upset girlfriend. At first, it seemed like I made a mistake, seeing how it was only my induction day and I was already getting yelled at. Now let's practice with another sound. When you have T-E-N, T-O-N, or T-A-I-N at the end of the word, and the syllable is not stressed, the T makes a different sound. We have to make a stop T and link it to the N. Example, kitten. You can say kitten, but most people say kitten. You do the stop T, kit. You don't release, and then you fall to an N, kit. Mm. When you make the stop T, the tongue is up, almost in the N position, so you don't have to change much. Kit, mm. kitten. But don't say kitten. I cannot pronounce these T's as a fast D. I cannot say kitten. It's kitten, or more commonly, kitten. No, I want a kitten. Well, get a kitten. I do notice you have a kitten hidden in your purse where you hide it. I feel weak as a kitten. God. Other examples. These are mittens. Mittens, more commonly, mittens. Mittens. They're not gloves because they don't have fingers. They're called mittens. I think I asked my mom for a pretty pair of mittens and she made them for me <laughs> with all the earned her living by knitting rabbit wool mittens and muffeties there's a nice scarf and some mittens in here did you already lose the mittens that i got you other example written written so you can say written or written written is more common just don't say written it's written let's look at some examples that end with t-o-n example cotton Cotton. But did you know how happy I was to escape from Charleston, from a world of slaves and corsets and cotton? He picked cotton in Mississippi, you told me a hundred times. Now you out here picking cotton like the rest of them. Step up and get your cotton candy. Like uh, cotton candy. Button. Button. Not button, it's but mm. stop T and fall to the N. But mm. push a button and end up in Canada or something. Ding a ling. I push a button and all five level control centers are notified at the same time you are. Between us, we don't have the brains to push a button. In a week, all we'd have to do is push a button. We'd be turning on 100 cars a day. I mean, how can anyone be serious about anything when, when some moron can steal a bomb or push a button and nuke us all until our shadows glow? Carton. Carton. This is a milk carton. Carton. Now let's practice with some words ending in T-A-I-N. Example, certain. Certain. You can say certain or certain. But don't say certain. It's certain. What makes you certain that your husband is um, involved with someone? I think we can be pretty certain that Bourne's not your source, then. I had to be certain that you were a decent man. 
kind. I know things. I'm certain that you know things. Are you absolutely certain that you understood the gentleman's question? And I'm not certain that you really understand this trade. Example, mountain. Mountain. You can say mountain or mountain. This grail tablet speaks of deserts and mountains and canyons. Mountains and the trees and the sea and the breeze. I see all the mountains and the surfers. Oh, I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not love, I am nothing. Antonius, with our best troops crushed in the mountains and the rebels marching on us as we speak, what did we celebrate? Fountain. Fountain. You can say fountain or fountain. Both are fine. And then I swim in the fountain all afternoon. I was thinking about a chocolate fondue fountain right there. That's a, that's a fountain of conversation, man. Thank you for watching. And if you like this video, subscribe to our channel. And if you want to become a member, click the join button. And we'll see you next time.